I am three plus key, your favorite social worker. Welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about how trust is the foundation of leadership. It's based off of what I'm reading in the book I read on the treadmill. That is Leadership 101 by John C. Maxwell. As you can see, it's a very short read, and I really want to encourage you to follow suit. At any rate, um, trust is the foundation of leadership. He discusses how a leader must be trusted in order to um, gain loyalty and respect by the subordinates. Now, a leader could be a parent, a teacher, the supervisor of the fries at McDonald's. The point is you have a common goal in mind and you are in charge of guiding people toward that shared goal. You have to identify it. Um, you need to provide the, the means or the instructions to achieve it. You need to provide the encouragement and the incentives if it's not something that comes naturally to the person. As it is in McDonald's, in the interview, they say, why do you want to work here? And it's like, well, <laughs> the money, right? If you're in community activism and you want to change a system or something like that, you have more of a shared goal, so more buy-in up front. Either way, um, the mission needs to be clear, the values need to be collective, um, and you're the one in charge of moving that project forward. Um, and that all comes with the group trusting you. And so what we're talking about is competence, connection, and character in order to elicit that trust in you as a leader. Competence can look a number of ways, but essentially you just need to know what you're talking about <laughs> and be able to communicate it effectively. I was saying earlier, there are times when I need to speak publicly on a moment's notice, right? There have definitely been times I'm with a collaborative group at the library, at a park, um, just attending someone else's staff meeting, something like that. And I'll get a, a quick text or a look over or something like that. Lakitha will be speaking <laughs> in a minute about yada, yada, yada. And what I will actually do, uh, we are prepared as leaders, right? So standard, you have a pen and paper with you, right? I will jot down three quick notes, even if you give me three minutes or one minute. Uh, a one minute note would look like three words that I need to hit and remember with whatever impromptu speech I'm about to give. It's relevant to their mission, whatever the topic is, and it's relevant to whatever reason uh, for, for me being there in that moment. Um, I highly suggest that method and kind of modifying it to however that works for you. But that demonstrates uh, strong competence on the subject matter, being able to speak quickly and communicate effectively on the reason why I'm there. Um, and it shows my professionalism and confidence in that moment as well. It's vital to exude uh, competence when you are wanting to um, communicate with whoever and lead that group to the shared goal. Uh, the next thing is connection, right? <laughs> uh, some people do better with it than others. I 
would recommend figuring out quickly what you like about somebody, being able to establish that. The feedback I've gotten is sometimes there are people who don't register what they like about somebody so readily. In that case, practice it. When you're in a busy area or maybe you go to a park and just people watch and just point out things that you like about, oh, I like his pants. I like how she has her hair done and get in the practice of recognizing these things. And then when you're in group settings, in social settings, even uh, just communicating with anybody, the cashier or whatever, the next step to that is identifying traits, characteristics of another's personality. Uh, I think she's funny. Uh, she's really kind. She's really warm. I enjoyed that conversation with her. And then the third step is beginning to vocalize that to people. Um, what I've personally noticed is any observation of another person, people tend to appreciate. So sometimes it's physical. I would lean toward staying away from that in a professional capacity. Uh, but gauge it, right? If a guy is wearing a tie that has a 3D pattern on it, he clearly <laughs> wore that um, and wouldn't mind a favorable observation about it, right? Um, I have children, adult children, and I tend to talk to other women about the children in their lives, be it their own biological children, adoption, as are mine, um, nieces, nephews, neighbors, that kind of thing. Typically, you know, we like kids. Um, further than that, hobbies are always safe. Getting to that, we want to get to a shared interest. We want to get to some type of humor for comic relief, particularly in this social work field where things are very, very heavy. Um, so initially that connection should be something lighthearted with clients. Do want a fair amount of relatability without too much disclosure. Um, if you've been in a similar situation that would help the client, say that. And that also comes with practice. You don't want to say, when I was three years old, my dog died and I've never recovered and I've hated every dog ever since. And then the person has a dog right there. So don't, so don't say that. It could be, oh, when I was three, I had two, a dog that I loved. It was a dog just like that one. How old is that dog? And then put it back to them. Now we're talking about the dog, something that we both love, a shared interest. Um, I would encourage, uh, as far as connection is concerned, to pursue that as a, a subject matter to learn more about, particularly in the social work field. We base our whole careers off of the ability to engage and connect fairly quickly so that we can get to the working relationship part. But trust is such a vital part of that. And then finally, character as a leader for sure matters. Do you have integrity? Meaning you say one thing to the group behind closed doors. You have a totally different attitude, opinion, position. If that gets out, that's a wrap. Um, you want to operate in fairness, respect. Um, I always start a group that I'm leading with that of clients, regardless of the population. Uh, it's one of the very first things I'll say within the first 10 minutes is come into a room, introduce myself, 
and let it be known that I operate off of fairness and respect. What goes for you also goes for you. I won't be yelling, calling you out of your name, attempting to embarrass you, and the expectation is that that is reciprocated as well. Further, in this speech, right, um, if I do any of these things, I disrespect you or do not act in fairness, I am open to being called out on that. And that's how serious I am of upholding that for me and for you, right? And that would be a message to clients, to other staff or people in other positions that are witnessing this interaction. You're modeling for them how that should be. That should be standard company culture, fairness, respect. We operate in integrity. We are honest to a fault. Even calling it out. This might burn me. I might be the jerk here, but honesty with Kuth, of course. Honesty without love and tact, uh, you know, you could argue what's the point. It was it received the messaging that you were attempting to give. So honesty, fairness, respect integrity, character matters, always do the right thing. Um, others are witnessing your behavior. So um, those are the ways that you elicit trust from others as a leader. Again, that's competence, connection, and character. The foundation of leadership is trust. Again, this is coming from Leadership 101 by John C. Maxwell. My name is 3 Plus Key. I am your favorite social worker, always encouraging you to pursue the smile. How do you do that? By prioritizing these three things. Number one, the Lord. Number two, physical health. Number three, persistent education. Please subscribe to this channel, like this video, comment below other leadership traits and tips that you have. Um, and I will talk to you later.